welcome to Journey into Parenting. Um, so I'm really excited to have uh, Julie here today to do an interview. Um, so this channel is all about preparing for parenthood because actually becoming a parent is one of the most huge, you know, biggest transitions that you're ever going to go through in your life. Um, and I want to help you to make that as easy as possible so that you can thrive alongside your child. Um, so today we're going to look a little bit at um, Korea and how you might kind of adapt what you do for a living to um, fit in with spending time with your child. Um, and this is something that Julie specialises in. So yeah, I wonder if you could just tell us a bit more about uh, what it is that you do. Yeah, thank you for having me, Mina. It's lovely. Okay. <clears throat> so, got a frog in my throat. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm Julie Hartel, and I founded the Mum Almighty um, a few years ago. And what I do is I actually help um, mums to ditch the guilt and the self doubt that they might feel when they're returning to work. And I help them to improve their confidence and um, broaden their horizons because. Sometimes there's nothing worse than after having children, having a career break with your children or homeschooling with children and then realizing that actually you want to go back to work or you need to go back to work to pay the bills. And you might not want to go back to the original job you were doing before or the industry that you were doing before. And um, it's quite normal for mums to feel like that they want to give back and have a, have a sense of purpose in their job. Um, so I help them navigate around going back to work and finding a new career if that's what they want with, with more confidence and less guilt. And I do that um, through my online mentoring course. So that's a three month um, online mentoring. Cool. And would you say it's a surprise to a lot of women how much they change as a person after having a child? Because Oh my think... goodness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know about you. I mean, I know you're a parent and, and I'm a parent. So, I, you know, you have this yellow book, a birth plan, don't you? And you plan everything for your birth. And that doesn't always go according to plan. No. And in your brain, you have this mental uh, sort of vision of what life will be like. You know, it's cute. You'll be in the rocking chair feeding. Everything will be lovely. Your, your partner's kissing you on the head and looking adoringly at you. And, and really, it's, it's not like that. I mean, it can be like that, but it doesn't always stay like that. And what I found was that it was like having my identity stolen. Um, and I just woke up one day and, and was, you know, angry and tired, exhausted. And, um, you know, my relationship was uh, faltering and my relationship with my children suffered as well. And I found it really hard to connect with my second child as well. Um, and so that there's lots of emotions that you go through as a mum and you feel like you're doing it alone, even though there's millions of other mums going through the same thing as you. There's something that stops us from talking to other mums about how upset we feel about us as a, as a mum, <clears throat> you know, that we can't achieve the perfectionist mum that we try and strive towards. And, <clears throat> and, and you know, I, I just feel like if we talk about it more as we're doing now, then it just makes it seem so normal because it is normal to feel this way, to feel like you're somebody else that someone's stolen your identity. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I think it's being a parent is both, it's both more amazing and more difficult than you imagine it's going to be before you have a child, I think. Because yeah. um, I did some interviews with um, new parents before Christmas and there were, there were sort of some common things that they all seemed to say. And one of them was that they were, they were shocked by the, the isolation that they yeah. felt, you know, that yeah. it can be difficult even to leave the house when you've got a small child. Um, but also they were really surprised by how much love they felt that, that actually um, when you have this little being in your arms, suddenly this love that you didn't even realise you were capable of can, can start to overflow. So there's, there's kind yeah. of both of those polarities. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. That that it, there's nothing like it. I mean, I love my husband, but then the love that I have for my children is, is nothing like my husband. They come first, he comes second. Mm -hmm. And he comes a close first if he picks the things up off the floor as he walks up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're yeah. absolutely right. I mean, in the middle of the night, you do feel very isolated and lonely. Mm -hmm. And you think that you're the only person awake feeding a baby or trying to get them to go to sleep as you tiptoe out of the bedroom. 
crossing mm. your fingers that they're not going to cry again as you walk away. You know, and you look out the window and there's, there's no other lights on in the middle of the night and it's just you and you do feel, you feel, and I think also you feel a bit angry that your partner might be asleep and they're sleeping soundly. The other child, because mm. I've got two, the other child's sleeping soundly and you're awake feeling like you do everything. And I think that's quite normal for mums to, to feel like that we're juggling so many hats all at the same time and yeah, nobody yeah. else can do it but you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, and I, I think for me, what really helped was um, keeping a thread of my old identity as I became a parent. Because um, my, for most of my adult life, I've been a circus performer. Um, and what's great about the circus community is that children are quite integrated into it. So it's, it's kind of normal to take your baby or your child along to shows or along to rehearsals. Um, so when my son was five weeks old, um, I started training Ariel again and there were, there were a bunch of us that had children around the same time. And so we'd support each other to train. And I think like just having that a couple of times a week so that I, I could do something creative and something physical where I still felt like myself was, yeah. was really crucial actually, uh, yeah. to, you know, for my mental health. Yeah. You definitely need other mums around you so you can bounce ideas off them and um, mm. share good good ideas <clears throat> but um, sometimes what I found with my second my second child was nof nothing like my first and you know I was able to get out and socialize and she was very portable and would sleep in the car seat my second I, I describe her as feral as a baby because okay. she, I parented her exactly the same but she wouldn't sleep she didn't want to feed on me but she was constantly hungry I I felt like there was nothing that I could do that was enough for her. I mean, she's grown yeah. up to be a, a beautifully, very academic child and everything's great now. But I think that's what started me down a dark path because of the exhaustion that I was feeling. And mm. that stopped me going out and socialising because I felt like I was failing as a mother and I didn't want yeah. other parents and other friends to see me. I mean, it was hard enough just trying to get out the door with, with the baby that was crying, mm. you know, and that incessant cry can, can drive you a bit mad sometimes. So yeah, I did, I did feel really isolated at that time. It was a real dark time for me. Um, and I didn't want to reach out. I didn't want to tell people how I was feeling. And I just took it out on, on my husband, unfortunately. I mean, we're still together now, we're all happy. But um, uh, yeah, at the time it, it wasn't, it was really, really a hard time. Mm, and I, I think there's a growing um, movement of, you know, mum's having the courage to talk about the difficult bits. And actually, I, I've sort of tended to find that, you know, if I take that risk and say, well, I, actually, I'm exhausted, or actually, he won't eat anything apart from <clears throat> bananas, and I don't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. That, um, that, um, it, it's a relief for other people, actually, because then they can sort of share yeah. the fact that they're finding it difficult as well. And then yeah, exactly. start to, to actually kind of get some you know some genuine support yeah it's funny because inside you think oh, I don't want to tell them how I'm feeling because they'll think I'm you know a failure or they'll think mm. something negative your brain makes you feel like that that anxiety in your brain that mm. what if yeah but as soon as you relieve yourself with that mm. thought and you put it out there you feel lighter and everyone else feels like oh my god I'm so glad you said that I feel exactly the same and it just yeah opens up the conversation and it's just mm it's it's really empowering for for everybody that hears it and that's why you know i love you know doing these interviews i like, like doing my public speaking i share my story about mm. about having my children and what it was like going back to work as well mm -hmm. yeah amazing um so i wonder um if you were if you were now expecting your first child and were sort of you know planning the next year in terms of um you know, how you're going to structure your work life and how you were going to kind of maintain a thread of identity. Is there anything you do differently or, or what advice would you give to? You know? um, I think I probably wouldn't try to plan so much because I think okay. that's what I did in the first place is that I <clears throat> tried to put things into place as, as a structure. Mm. And when things didn't meet that structure, it felt like a failure. So mm -hmm. I think I would just be more relaxed and more just let it be, see what happens, see what the child's character is like and the you know, personality. You never know what the next child will be like until they arrive. And so you have to deal with those circumstances when they're brought to you. <clears throat> so I think I'd be 
lot more relaxed and um, less worried about what people would think about me. But maybe that's age and experience as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, not worried about what people think about me at all now. Um, and uh, if anything, I, I want to share my experiences with others just to help them. Mm, that's really refreshing. So it's kind of like, it reminded me a little bit of um, when I've done workshops in kind of theatrical improv and, it, and it's almost like just sort of jamming it a little bit, like be, being willing to, to be in the unknown and actually yeah. respond to, to what's really happening, like respond yeah, to the, yeah. the child. Take each day. <clears throat> yeah, ah. exactly. Hmm, great. And I think also just kind of, um, if we're willing to, to have the courage to just meet life as it really is, um, part of that is kind of meeting our own emotional state and, and just allowing for the fact that we might feel um, things that we didn't expect to feel about the situation that we're in. Yeah, yeah, and just having an awareness <clears throat> of those different feelings. So, you know, don't brush them under the carpet, don't hide from them, don't, mm -hmm. don't let other people not see them. You know, yeah. just be open and be aware of how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even now, me and my husband have learned to tell each other if we're feeling a bit anxious about something. You know, we're mm -hmm. in lockdown at the moment, and he's been really open about being furloughed and how that's made him feel. And that means mm -hmm. I can I know how to support him. But yeah. it's it's a bit unusual for men to to share their feelings. It's a bit unusual for him, really. But I think this is a a special kind of circumstances that we're in at the moment. This climate of lockdown. Um, mm. and, and you know he's got the balls to just tell me that he's, he's he needs a challenge. He he feels like he hasn't he's not uh, he's not being our rock, but you know he is being our rock. But he just feels like he's not. So I just I just love him for being open with me so that I can support him as well. Yeah, it's such a relief, isn't it, when people just uh, you know tell us what they need or express how they're feeling. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. So at what point um, do women usually come to you? Like, is there a particular kind of um, stage in their child's development or does it vary quite a lot? Um, it, it has varied. Um, I've had, uh, I think while they're in the stage of pregnancy, they're all, um, you know, buoyant and happy and not really sure what's around the corner. So I don't have pregnant women on my books. Okay. Um, what I do have is where they are into the toddler stage, um, right up to age 10 and 11 and 12. Um, because a lot of the clients that I have, some have just um, stopped work altogether mm. and decided to become um, a, a mother to raise their children. And when they've got to senior school or high school, they decided that they want to go back because they feel that they need to use their skills and their talents that they've laid dormant for quite a while. So it does range from, I'd say, toddler up to pre-teens. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important as well. I think we spoke about this the other day. Um, to actually acknowledge all of the skills that you need to be a parent because often those things can can go somewhat unnoticed but actually um it's for me it's one of the most like difficult things that I've ever done and often like um you know I, I find when I have gone out to work I'm like oh this is really easy like yeah. compared to actually kind of you know being with a toddler all day yeah yeah I mean wow we've got so many transferable skills that we can tap into mm -hmm. um, and having a small toddler who's tantruming and you've got to try and negotiate with you with them uh, mm -hmm. means that you're really good at negotiating whether mm -hmm. it's you know with your boss with some team members at work or whether it's the small child it's it's negotiating and mm -hmm. having patience and um, you know managing a team when you've got more than one child mm -hmm. all of those things are so important and so transferable and mm. I, you know, mums tend to forget that they've got those skills or, or think that they're less important. And mm. what's surprising is uh, a lot of managers and recruiters will also see us like that, that they've just been a mum. And I'm trying to, as a, a lot of other people are trying to change that with trying to introduce flexible working in the, in the workplace as well. And, you know, recognising that mums still have those skills. They haven't gone away. They've just been on pause and we can you know press play again anytime we want yeah but I think that's that's incredible and it, it feels quite revolutionary actually rather than you know I think it's easy when you've been really dedicated to being a parent to sort of look at your CV and think 
oh, well, there's a big gap. I've done nothing. But, but to reframe that as actually, you know, I've been a full time carer. Um, and these are all of the skills that I've developed and that they're just as valid and just as valuable as skills that you gain in the workplace. Um, I think efficiency is a really important one and sort of time management, you know, Absolutely. that you develop those skills. Yeah, prioritising, organising. Mm. You know, we become yeah. masters of that when we're mums. Absolutely. Um, you know, even just packing the changing bag, you know what needs to be in there. You know that you need to um, predict any eventuality of a baby puking all over your pooing you're having you know so you're mm. always thinking about what might happen and mm. preparing for that and that is just so what you need when you're in mm. business so it's yeah active. yeah completely um is this in your in your course is it, yeah, is so, it yeah okay great so in my um three months mentoring course which is called reignited and returning um, it includes the skills audit. So what I do is we reflect on a client's um, skills and experiences and achievements that they've had throughout their life and also through um, being a mother. And then we tap into those and see which ones they feel more, um, an af more affinity to and more passion towards. And if there's any gaps, because we do a skills audit, we, we look to see if there's any gaps. Then, well, then we can fill those if we need to with online courses. At the moment, it's all online because we're on lockdown, but... You know, yeah. there's so many um, uh, courses, uh, learning and development courses that mums or anybody can go on. Um, mm. And that can be done in like, you know, intensively over six months. And I've got some mums that are doing that at the moment that are, you know, having their children through the day and uh, in the evening because they've got that intense, um, you know, need and want to achieve. Mm. They're using their nighttime to, to learn and develop themselves. And that's brilliant. I love it. It's so empowering. Mm -hmm. yeah it's great and I think it's it's another way of caring for ourselves because I think um you know that, that there's a lot of people talk about um the importance of self-care mm -hmm. when you're a mum um which is brilliant but I think a lot of people think that means you know having a bubble bath or you know <laughs> I'm doing yeah. some meditation. but actually um it doesn't just mean that it can mean that but I think it can also be you know yeah de developing yourself as a professional woman or yeah. you know, making some art or you know like that that actually um we're multi-faceted multi-dimensional beings and for us to feel well in the world we need to kind of acknowledge all of that and yeah absolutely absolutely uh, that's just reminded me when i was younger and my children were toddlers and have the idea of having a bath without someone calling your name or mommy or yeah. you know, come bursting in and sitting on the toilet while you're in the bath <laughs> with music on yeah it was so rare and i think it mm. only happened on mother's day and yeah. uh it's, it's funny isn't it what the things that you you give up and mm. you miss but you know as my children have got older i'm able to have baths and we've now got a lock on the door which is perfect <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's sort of um you know when you're a mum with a small child you you know how to enjoy yourself as well like I, I remember on those kind of rare evenings that I could go out dancing and I'd be like get out of my way just kind of like you know going totally <laughs> wild and yeah. they're like what's up with her oh she's a mother <laughs> I get it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. absolutely yeah just let her go yeah she needs the time <laughs> I could definitely relate to that yeah um okay amazing well yeah so just to encourage you if you're um if you're expecting your first child or you know you've got a small child just to encourage you to to reach out for support and probably you know invite in more support than you think you need um and so myself and julia have both got online courses so um my course is about um it's about preparing for parenthood but also kind of um, integrating your child into your life and into your relationships so that you can uh, thrive alongside them. Um, so I'll put a transcript of the talk um, and I'll say links to everything that we're offering in the show notes below. Lovely. And um, is there any anything, any kind of final words that you'd like to offer? Uh, my final words is while we're in quarantine and hopefully it'll be lifted soon, um, just I think everyone's anxiety is a little bit heightened with mm. what's around the corner and are probably, they're probably a bit worried about their children going back to nursery or to the childminder or to school. And I suppose my, my biggest um, piece of advice is try not to worry, which I know is the easiest thing <laughs> in the world to say and not the easiest thing to do, but 
don't let social media or the TV um, make you worry because there's a lot of fake news out there. There's a lot of rumors going on. So schedule your worry time to one part of the day, maybe when you get up in the morning, have, have half an hour with a coffee and get all those worries out on paper. And then when you've listed all your worries about what's going on in your mind and they're all untangled and onto a piece of paper, have a look to see if there's any supporting evidence to prove any of those worries that you've got. And if there isn't, which I'm sure there won't be, then just screw up the piece of paper and throw it away. Okay, great. That sounds like great advice. And thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me today. It's been lovely talking to you, Nina. Great. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.